secrets that are buried that have never been disclosed in the public interest. I don't think we yet know the full story. There's been lots of speculation over the years. I was, I was a kid. I was in first grade, and I still remember going home on November 22nd of 1963, and I remember walking into my house in Austin, Texas, simply walking in because we'd been let, we were let out around noon, or as I remember, and it's a resting moment for me. Walking home, I, I come into my house, and I simply say, Mom, why did they shoot the president? That's all, you know, it's... Unfortunately, in U.S. history, we've, you know, we've had a number of a president that was shot. That's the reason. Well, I get why you have to protect the president, right? But there's a lot of questions. A lot of questions about the Kennedy. How many can people know, for example, who well, said in the whole ball game well, I, and the yeah, IPACs? You know, part of the problem with secrecy is it engenders a lot of conspiracy theories. So in the absence of disclosure, in the absence of making it getting it for, making informed opinions and perspectives about what really happened, if you don't know what actually happened or what the context for what happened, it does engender other theories. And I realize in that in that vacuum people will speculate and you know, people will what speculate across the spectrum. About it, well, yeah. By the way, you're back to the Yeah, Mr. Drake, um I'm Mr. Chairman. Oh, I'm sorry. Were you I'm supposed to? No, no. But I, I do have a question for you. I'm supposed to. Okay. I'm supposed to meet up with that. Did you tie? Do you have the water or something? Yeah, I do. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Just a quick question. I happen to be East German. And right, right, right. Now, two months after the Berlin Wall came down, the Stasi headquarters were raided. They went in, they grabbed the files, and took them back from the Stasi. We've got maybe, what, 2,000, 3,000 people here? How far, how far are we from that kind of tipping point? What's it going to take for? Well, I've said that we we effectively have the equivalent of digital turnkey tyranny, because, right? Right. Because the United States can basically, with the click of a mouse in secret, create profiles on anybody they want to by just by just accessing what data is available on an extraordinarily vast scale. Remember, the metadata alone, that's surveillance data. Right. Yep. You don't, you just don't keep collecting it, because what it does, it pro ultimately is a profile. And that's precisically what the Stasi want. They had a profile yep. on every, practically every citizen, and large amounts of it. And they just kept adding to those files. Here, it makes it much easier electronically to oh, yeah. access that on, a, on an order of, ma scale. order of magnitude. No, yeah. I mean, there's Stasi officers who've been interviewed mm -hmm. who said we would have drooled the prospect of having oh, yeah. NSA technology. I remember they did literally build a fence around the country, at least on the west side or I, I, around Berlin. I've been, I've been. Well, I was there. I used to look out the porthole window of the of the of the. Reconnaissance planes they used to fly on, mm -hmm. uh, as, as well as the electronic warfare platform I was on. And I could see, you could see yeah. the border zone. I'm just coming through the like border. Someone just take, you know, just this cut. Yeah. Right? You know, you know this at the checkpoints? They had concrete blocks at each side of the car. Yeah. You could just crush the car why? if you wanted to. But why? What, well, who wants to live in that kind of society? What does it do to who we, who we are? Who does it creativity? What does it do? Because you, you know, honestly, we fear, because when you start fearing your own citizens, when you're afraid they're going to exercise their sovereignty, I mean, that's what it comes to. And the problem here is we have the, I mean, the extraordinary communications technology. It has, it's accessible to all, but it right. also gives the government vast access that they choose to abuse it, especially when they're in league with companies that provide these services. And now what, what I tell my friends is there are roughly 200 million Americans online. Our ability to generate data increases at pretty much a linear fashion. We're now at a point where the ability to process that data is exponential. So yeah, they're well, always, those machines are always going to be the ahead of us. Of data. Okay? I used to work in this space, right? How do you make sense of large amounts of data, literally? What NSA has chosen to do is we just need to collect as much as possible. That's how that's how we deal with it. Right. And we'll figure out what we how to sort through it later. Yep, right? yep. That's, that's what I'm telling people. The problem people. is with that method is that you end up, even for legitimate purposes, you end up hiding a whole lot. And it also gives you unfettered access to extort methods that has nothing at all to do with even your own mandate. It's just all swept up. And this mantra that somehow, you know, it doesn't matter if you have nothing to hide, that's not true. When I actually tell, talk to people personally, mm -hmm. they'll draw lines. When I talk to the 20-somethings and thir early 30-somethings I work with, right, they'll say two things. They'll say, I draw the line at the, at the shades, the shades of my apartment. They don't want the government having unfettered access without a warrant to what goes on inside their apartment. 
right? And they want the choice of what they do with the data they do share. It's their choice, not mm -hmm. the government's. My, even, even when it comes to Facebook and things like that, they want the choice. Right. So when the government decides to take all that information data and and, and the, I've lived this thing. I lived this thing for years and years. I don't want people to live this. It's extremely unnerving. When you know you're being followed around, you know that during my cooperative period with the FBI, chilling. They said, yeah, Mr. Drake, we knew when you left home, we knew which car you left in, because I had both electric, I had electric vehicle in my Prius. They knew which one I used. They said, we knew when you went to work, we knew when you left work. We knew where everywhere you practically went, each and every day. Now, that was just physical surveillance. Like that itself is unnerving, knowing when you pull out of the driveway and that's your own that team. they know that you're actually doing And that. that's your own well, team, they, too. I mean, they considered I was, I was engaged in criminal activity, and I had become an enemy of the state. Right. And they right. actually sicked, they sicked on me. The very unit, it's, it's the elite unit in the FBI, the mole hunters, they go after real spies. I was considered so dangerous that they had to sick all those, most of the resources had been assigned to deal with people like myself, and I was, at that time, I was considered subject number one. That's how, that's what, yeah. Sounds incredibly stressful. Well, yeah, but, yeah. I mean, your own government, yeah. and then you're facing a distinct prospect that they may eventually find a way to charge you criminally, yep. and they did. They had a secret indictment, but it took Obama to actually indict you. Now you're facing 35 years in prison, and your name splashed all over. Yep. There, there, was, there was actually a congressman in this very building looking forward to seeing me in an orange jumpsuit. Because, see, it's in 2010, it was April 14th of 2010 when I was charged. That's only three, you know, a little over three and a half years ago. It's so rare in American history. I was only the second whistleblower in U.S. history. The first was Daniel Ellsberg, right. To be charged in like manner. It's so rare that even as I said during, during my rally speech, it's so rare that to be charged the espionage. You get lumped in with the Alger James, you get lunched in, right. lumped, lumped in with the Alger Hisses, you get lumped in with the Robert Hansons. Those are the real spies. Those are the are spies like that really did, truly did compromise national security. Like revolution? So I'm lumped, right. so right. you're automatically persona right. non grata, right. and your natural right. allies, like yeah. civil liberties yeah. and freedom got, groups, um, are like this because it's like, wait a minute. He's But you're not. Right. But you're not. But you're not. Right. And it doesn't matter. I had family say, if you did the crime, do the time. Go to Ow. go to trial and, and prove you're innocent. Wait a minute. You're innocent until proven guilty. I don't have to prove my innocence. They have to go beyond reasonable doubt that I'm guilty. I want everyone to visualize this, this whole class has been filled. I, a rebellion there was still hand. enough due process left. That. Extraordinarily fair you judge. Can, you can I had public defenders who right? made the case, and then I had Justin Radak leading to the defense, my defense in the court of public opinion, which ultimately turned the tide in terms of the public and the so press the realizing have, you know, maybe family, there's something you know, going on here that's extremely unsettling that we really, so, we, so, we really and you need. got lucky. Look, right. You, you got really lucky. Yeah, because he... My best friend, he said he was like amazed. He said, I thought for sure you'd end up in prison. He's still surprised. Because it's, it's, it's so rare. If the government decides to take you down, they usually get it. Oh, yeah, they're going to take you down. So you know what it means? To face yeah. over four or five year period, prospect of having everything you took an oath to support and so taken away from you personally. All right? Why is it any you know what different? it means to keep right, those freedoms, myself. to Matt, keep those rights, just right here, to live those liberties, come to me. and not to have them taken away. It means more to me right? now than ever. And every day and day that goes by since my pro forma sentence, in which I was, I kept those freedoms and liberties. It means more to me than ever to keep them, not have them yeah. taken away. Unfortunately, yeah. I've got you, others, friend. John Kiriakou, you know, he's the only person who's prosecuted, got indicted, is in prison. Because yeah, what did he expose? State-sponsored torture program. Say, one person the very program that I went through, but not because for torture, but to learn what would happen if you got tortured. It was a SEER program at Fairchild Air Force Base. I never imagined that that program would be reverse engineered and used as for state-sponsored torture. It was all unnecessary. Heck, even the Germans during the Nazi regime realized that you don't, don't hammer up on people. That's right. When you had downed pilots and others that they that they had taken as prisoners, you, you, you befriend them, you be nice to them. You keep them comfortable, there's a greater chance they'll actually say something.
Freeman. You can uh, hit me on Twitter at Gorilla Artist. There's an anecdote. It's true. There is a. And if Perry Washington marries me, y'all invite to the wedding. Japanese pilots that were shot down to dive bomber. We act radio. Early in the war. We. The intelligence officers were so were so nice to him that actually, whenever they became successful later on, actually paid for like a trip to Vegas for these guys. Like, had no idea where it's coming from. Turns out these Japanese guys were so happy. Let me know when um we are ready here. I want to shout out to Epic, uh, who did the crypto party uh, at the uh, public citizens. I sent my first encryption. Well, we were supposed to be different. All right. See? That was on always the case. It was always yourself, the case. We're teach different. One, teach one, but right. that's been completely right. converted. Right. Yep. The, yep. That <coughs> exceptionalism <coughs> no. has now been said we can get away with anything because we're Americans. Uh, right. Wait a what, we go to the dark side? Yeah, yeah we used to have the moral high then, ground, right. Yep. Somehow, that moral, that, that, that moral high ground gives us license. T-shirt right here. License? No, now we're bullies. The, 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 the moral high ground's gone. Now, now we're just bullies. Yeah, but why? I've been racking my brains about this for... Why? Because you've been on the inside. You've seen it. Power is a weird thing. I was exposed to the halls shirt. of power, the secret halls of power. And you can wear this at your same thing table when you debate with When you have access okay? to this kind right. of information, that's been my time. I want to again thank Epic. I want to thank Public Citizen. I want to thank Free Press. I want to thank everyone in the lives of others. Stop watching that. I want to thank you for the lives of others. I want to thank you for the lives of others. But particularly, particularly, I want to thank everybody that pissed you off. Everything happens. The wall collapses. The files are quote unquote opened up. He sees his own files. He realizes that his apartment. In East Germany, having right. completely wired. He had no privacy when he thought he might. My aunt, my aunt was a Protestant minister. 1985, she started speaking against the state. Her own congregation turned her into five years in definite detention. Five years. Why? Because look, you had citizens turning on.